Aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. I'm Gordo the Texar. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Aloha, everybody. And our guest today is Chuck Lurch from DR Fortress. Everybody. Yeah, how's it? Hey. He's going to talk about Cloud Sigma. Welcome yeah. back. Uh, thanks. Well, Chuck's our first two-time guest. That's right. He must a, be important. He's a repeater. He's a repeater. <laughs> he's a repeater. <laughs> he's a repeater. <laughs> he's a repeater. So Chuck, you're going to talk about Cloud Sigma. Yep. Not not Sigma as in the 18th letter of the Greek alphabet. No. No, not at no. all. And not like Six Sigma. No. Or not like or Six Sigma. sigma. Yeah, yeah no. so not like that one either. This is, is Cloud Sigma. This is Cloud Sigma. <laughs> and this is not Six Sigma <laughs> yeah. in the cloud either. Yeah. And we're going right. to dovetail it off of, um, you know, we had the Sequoia Network guys on who talked about all the different flavors of cloud. You know, they're in the business, they're with Presidio, and they're in the business of helping people decide which mm -hmm. flavor yeah. of cloud to go. Hybrid cloud, you know, yep. local cloud, right. private cloud, those kinds of things. And you've got an interesting new, not new, it's been around for a couple of years, couple years Cloud yeah. Sigma product, but that's a national, international, pro international, international yeah. product. Um, yeah, it'll be fun and, to and compare so, and contrast, because yeah. there are issues with cloud from, you know, Hawaii, so we'll talk about that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this can be awesome. So please grab a chair. Uh, have a libation. And by God, and, get a drink, man. And we got new solo cups. <laughs> These aren't solo cups. Well, they're not. They're cups. like dancing solo cups. They're Look so, at all curved. They're kind of curvy. Well, You're no. supposed to have a measuring line for your alcohol. Oh, yeah. but, but look at this. I'll go to the uh, the to high the, side to the mixologist and say I'd like mine to this side, please, <laughs> not this one over here. <laughs> so I've got this all figured out. All right. Anyway, so um, I got a little bit of news. Let's do it. You want to do a little bit of news? And now we got no, we also have, you know, got one tech job. Okay. Maybe we should do that one first. Okay, let's okay. have it. So, you know, take, we have this segment. Chuck, Chuck has before. a tech, Chuck uh -huh. has yeah. a tech so job. So we got this, uh, you know, got one tech job. I thought this was a great one. Um, take a look at that sign. Look at that door <laughs> carefully. <laughs> this is, <laughs> do this not is, enter, enter only. This so, is a problem. This yeah. is, yes, yeah. I got one from the Big Island I'm going to use next week. It's what? awesome. Oh, yeah. oh, it's so, terrific. So what do you think is just going on there? I mean, there isn't a lot in the going on there. The middle of construction, construction error, or is that in Canada or something? Well, you oh. know, that did, come, <laughs> that did come from a gullible. Okay. So, so that did come from Hamish. Maybe so they, they were, maybe could, they, could you know, in the middle of construction, they're changing yeah. the door. Yeah. I mean, but that's kind of, that just bothers me. It should. I mean, I, I, gosh, I go to places and that, I run into that. I don't know what to do. I stand well, there like a fool. <laughs> I know. I had to go pick you up one day. Remember? What do you do? Like, <laughs> you were lost. Gordo, I want to go in here, but it's okay, a problem. It says no. Okay. Um, we'll let it go. I like the ones at, at um, some of the big box buildings where it says exit only, and you walk up to it, and the door opens. Nice. And I walk in. Yeah, so yeah. I, that, so that <laughs> works. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was, you know, I got one tech job. And then I got a little bit of news, but th this one I thought was interesting because I'm an old guy is that, um, uh, and it, it has a kind of a cloud piece to it. Mm -hmm. So, Remember mm. we talked about the old mainframe computer systems that are out, uh, out there? COBOL and Assembler. Oh, you mean yep. all the ones the state still uses? And yep. the city and county. <laughs> and almost D, almost every DMV in the country. Yep. Okay. Um, still using the mainframe. And it's still big in banks, huh? Like uh, banks. Yeah, still banks, yeah. yeah. Credit so, unions, yeah. Credit unions, right? Yep. Still a lot there. So, you know, so there's a, a group out of, um, out of Sweden, um, LZ Labs. Now, it's LZ. Now, if it's Sweden, maybe it's LZ Labs. They say the Z different, but LZ or LZ Labs in Sweden ha are um, developing a, a product that will convert your COBOL to, to um, non-COBOL wow. and run it on. What do you mean? To not to what? <coughs> to not to. They to chop up your code. And chop up your code and, then re <laughs> and and re re redeploy your code. I mean, and, and, what, and what? running on Red Hat wow. Linux and um, and on Microsoft SQL Server. But what do they convert COBOL to? Red Hat Linux. I mean, what's the language? I don't know. LZ Labs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it's it's their so proprietary. It's interesting. It's their, proprietary, it's their proprietary, and um, it's anticipating because you know this stuff is old. I Cobalt mean, has to die. DMV. Yeah. yeah, it's been around. Well, I started. That's what probably. I learned. Yeah, yeah, that's what I learned too. Fresh yeah, out of high school, well, college. Kind of young to be learning Cobalt. That was my first thing I learned in college. Nineteen eighty. Two for me, COBOL. Well, they taught it at KCC for about five years, until about five years ago, because they said it taught people how to um, Look, uh, be. There they were. Uh, that, you know what? That's Chuck. That's a, <laughs> no, that's Gordo. <laughs> that's a 360. I worked, I worked on one of those. That was that was. And those got little cards. They got the cards there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what those cards were called? Not punch cards. Well, that's, that's what I call them. I, I don't them. know what they call them. Oh, it was Hollerith card. Yeah, named Hollerith, yeah. Named yeah, yeah, after the guy right, that invented right, right. it. Mm -hmm. Nothing like actually, showing your age. I actually had that in high school. Like, I had, you know how you could take, like, um, what's it uh, What's it called? Like, Keep woodworking oh. or... Oh, 
Oh, vocational. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. but I, so I chose the data. It was called data processing back then. Yeah. I went and did that with the Hollerth card. Yeah, we had to sit, sit there. there. And I wasn't any good. I had the comptometer, and I mean, it was all oh, terrible. Yeah. Was Ooh, comptometers. This rough. stuff was a mess. The best thing that comptometers <laughs> could do was divide. <laughs> Once you hit that divide button on the comptometer, the thing would bounce around yeah, the table. I don't, I don't know. It was, just, it was all bad. All these things. Can you ever bring one of those to a to an elementary school or kindergarten class one day and ask these kids, what's this? They're not, they can't do it. They don't know that. They see them on a rotary phone now, they don't know they what don't know exactly. what they do. Exactly. Or a tape cassette. Yeah, yeah. I saw one kid, it was like the rotary phone, he looked at it, oh yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a phone. My grandfather told me about this. I think they went, rotate it, press. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to lock in the... They're rotate it, press. That's pretty good. That's <laughs> so pretty that good. was how that was going to work. Anyway, awesome. anyway, so these guys are, I think that was interesting, you know, the, yeah. the mainframe, the mainframe is not dead because you can do a lot of things on okay. it, you know, and um, it's just one of the things that it can do is, is find, other things. You can find somebody that still writes COBOL. And yeah. You guys are probably making money now. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of, there's a lot of farmers. Because they're all my age and older. Wisconsin, there's farmers in the winter. You started in COBOL. What year did you, what did you tap COBOL? Like, uh, 1995. So that's like 10 years after me, they were still starting yeah, so, so, there. Yeah. Wow. It was a good bait. I mean, the financial sector used it, right? So yep. it's, Yeah. They well, wanted to give me five bucks an hour after I learned that. I was making 100, well, I was making 100 bucks a day doing construction. Yeah. Like, give me five, well, that was so I joined, five the, I joined the Navy. Like, what's is 40. Stupid, right? No, it ain't working either. Yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah. That's yeah. how I got out of Kentucky. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we're glad you did. Anyway, so Ooh. Chuck, tell us a little bit about yourself. So you've been... Um, been in Hawaii for how long? I just moved back in 2012. And before that, you were where? In Las Vegas. So I lived out there for many years. I was a CIO for a national healthcare company and a family of dot-coms. Okay. Uh, but wanted to come back and raise my kids here. Okay. But when I first came to Hawaii, it was 2001, and I was doing a contract for the Department of Defense and the FAA. Okay. Uh, we were merging air traffic uh, information control systems. That was fun. No, I thought you were going to say we were merging air traffic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it's, an exper it's an experimental one. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who was president in 2001? That was after Reagan, right? That was after Reagan oh, fired gosh. all the uh, air traffic controllers. Was that Clinton? Remember when he did? They brought the military in for a while. I, I know. That was yeah. pretty Toronto, amazing. And then they, that must have been fun. Is that a good job now? What? Yeah. Air president? traffic controllers? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really high in demand right now. Is it? Is it big yeah, so they're looking for kids and they... So, well. so, so you got, did you guys rewrite software? Was it with new code? Like, was it a whole new system nationally, or what was it? It was deal? a whole new system. We did about thirty-five deployments um, across the country. So hmm. we headed it out of Hawaii. Wow! And it was touchscreen displays back in two thousand one, two thousand two. So that wow. was pretty That's awesome. innovative back that then. That was very innovative. Did they yeah. work? Like you touch they, it, and then the things all move. Later. Well, yeah, it, it was a little slow. You know, it was NT four based, right? Uh -huh. So wow. I mean, we're really going yeah. back. And by the time we commissioned the system. They had the pens, maybe the, the pens, you yep. poke the, window, the windows, the screens. The screens, yeah. right. Um, but by the time we actually, the FAA and everybody commissioned the system, um, NT was phased out, so we had to redo everything again. Oh, wow. Server 2000, yeah, yeah. XP. Uh, was that a government contract? Of course. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> I, I, surprise, surprise. Kept but, Chuck busy. And they're still using it to this day. I saw our friends that work there, and they still, still use using it. using it to this day? Yep. It's awesome. Well, this is probably pretty, probably, if it was probably really cool, I, hope. I hope they updated the security <laughs> system. Um, Yep. Security systems. You're going to have security minute, but you're going to do that in the second half of the show. We're Whenever changing, you want. We're changing <laughs> this format around. So now, so now you're you're moved back to Hawaii, yep. you're raising your kids here, mm -hmm. um, and you're with the Air Fortress. The Air Fortress, yes. And um, uh, but you've been in tech for like a long time. Yeah, since 1995, I started working for a defense contractor. Right, actually, while I was still in high school. Okay. And then went so so now so now there's this product that's offering that mm -hmm. the Air Fortress is is. Um, the sole holster for it. Yeah, we should yes. talk about the Air Force, what it is, in yes. case they missed our first episode. That's right. Okay, that's true, because we've had Fred yeah. on the show. Yeah, we talked so about Colo and tell us, and us tell a bit about, yeah, services. Okay, yeah. So, DR Fortress is um, the island's largest co location facility. Uh, it's gone through about three different names in the last 15 years. Um, so, mm -hmm. it was uh, Pihana Pacific, okay. then Equinex bought uh, Pihana, right. and then the senior management wanted to expand the facility, and Equinex didn't really want to go that route. So, the senior management bought out and created DR Fortress. Okay, which yeah. has been around for how long now? Oh, gosh. Now you're going to go, got me on the spot. Nice. Yeah, gotcha. it's, it's 2009, I think, yeah. was when it actually commissioned. Yeah, hi highest end data Fortress. center here for sure. I mean, yeah. DR Fortress has always been the place to go, even yeah. when it was Pihan. I mean, that, it's always right. been that, that yeah. place to go. And you say Colo, so I know you still, so let, let them know a little bit about yeah. that level of service, right? Because a lot of people don't understand what, what all is available down there. So our core service for many, many years is co-location, so we keep your servers and everything cool. My servers. Yeah. Your servers. Yeah. My client, uh, my client your servers. Clients, yeah. My client um, servers. You know, most of the bigger companies, and actually a lot of companies on the island, actually use DR Fortress. Yeah. yeah. 
So we keep the yeah, servers cool, we keep them powered, and um, we keep them on the internet, right? So the big thing is we are the internet exchange yeah. for the state of Hawaii. And what that means to all the viewers and everybody is that your internet's going to work faster because we're caching all your like iOS updates for your phones or anything else because we have Alchemy and other types of mm -hmm. caching providers that bring the content to Hawaii so it doesn't come across the sea. Right. Across the cables all the time. Sure. So, so that's so. now when I get my iOS update on my iPad or iPhone and, yep. or my Mac or my Mac or my Windows device, it's a lot faster. <laughs> it's a now. lot faster, yeah. It's a lot faster because of the fact that it's it's already here. Exactly. And I don't have to wait to get it from the mainland and bring it all across and I sit there and wait forever. Exactly. Oh, yeah, cool. so you yeah. don't have to you don't have to put your stuff up in Amazon or up in Microsoft stuff that's not housed locally, yeah. right? You can do it here at DR Fortress. So if you have applications or you're worried about the power in your facility or the connectivity of your office mm -hmm. Today, most modern well, operators yeah, are moving right. their stuff to DR Fortress or to local cloud hosting type facilities so, like this. So. Let's go ahead. And then the major driver for that is, let's say, you know, 10 years ago, they built their own cola facility for millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, right. But now it's like they're, they're like, okay, now I need to spend more capital money to buy a new generator, buy new battery packs, buy yeah. this, buy that. And I also have to employ all the facilities people to maintain all this stuff, and yeah, it's not their right. primary job. Yeah, yep. right. Um, so, you know, we're dedicated to, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, and so. also they never bought the generator. <laughs> so these yeah. guys have a massive generator yeah. and, and a huge and fuel they tank to drive. And they have more than one. They've got, yeah, oh, yeah, you got yeah, yeah. multiple five. generators yeah, yeah. and all of those kinds of things happening yeah. over there. So That's um, how you keep your stuff online. That's how yes. you keep your stuff. You know, so speaking of this, Amazon, <clears throat> I was talking to someone a couple weeks ago about, you know, why wouldn't Amazon put like a, a peering site here? locally yeah. right to mm -hmm. do that and so they amazon wanted to and here's why they didn't the state of hawaii said if you put a peering site here then we tax all of your sales yep. all of your sales nationwide mm -hmm. so amazon even went, if it's even if the yep. site is not performing uh it's just as a peering location yep. because they have a physical presence in hawaii why? and that's why amazon calls hawaii a red state so yeah they will to... not put a facility yep. here well, because about? we will tax every sale not every hawaii yep. sale Every is single that what, does Azure yeah. is the same problem if, if Microsoft came here? Because they don't have as big of a, they're not a stores the, person. I yeah, mean, they sell yeah. stuff, but, but it not depends as, on depends. what, I think it would depend on what they oh, were doing. That's so So ugly. again, uh, back to our... But we do need the revenue, so come on down, Amazon. Yeah, yeah we do need the revenue. And we got a rail to pay for. You guys uh, heard we, the problem. We can, yeah. we can watch our legislators just squander the heck out of this. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Um, we got to go. Wait, can't get Angus. He's called in sick today. So <laughs> Angus is called in sick. Angus is sick. But we got his, we got his long lost cousin, Raz McTackle, who's coming in. Raz McTackle so is going to be on the show today. Football player. Check so it out, He's going to come in and he's going to fill in for Raz. I think it's a Rez. first for Raz. It's a yeah. first for Raz. Anyway, we'll be back in about a minute. Hi, my name is Kim Lau, and I'm the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me live every other Monday at 4 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman. I represent the Puna and Ka'u District on the Big Island and the host of Ruderman Roundtable. We're here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. You can join us at thinktechhawaii.com. You can find a link there to, uh, to a page where you can see past episodes. And we talk here about good government, environmental issues, and issues of the day facing the state of Hawaii. I'm Russell Ruderman. Please join us for the Ruderman Roundtable. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm going on tour. I'm taking you around the world. We're going to Canada, and then we're going to, well, we're in America, then we're going to San Francisco. So keep staying tuned, 11 a.m. every Wednesday on the Savvy Chick Show. We'll see you next time. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on ThinkTechs. Welcome to ThinkTechHawaii.com. 
This is Johnson Choi, your host. The topic is Asia in Review. We do it on a monthly basis on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Be sure to check the schedule. See you. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Hibachi Talk. Uh, guess what? We didn't think we'd have Angus today, but I heard he's just giving us a call. Angus, what's going on, buddy? Hey there, Drew. Who's that wee guy you got in fiddling in for me? Tell him you can't have that job. Yeah, your cousin's taking your job. Hey, how's it, brah? McTackle. Is this Les McTackle here? Hey, you know, you tell my cousin. Too bad, I got the job now. Oh, I think, he's, I think he's watching. I well, think he you know, heard you. Tough, tough. I got it. You know what? Because you know why? He's in Scotland now. and he, you know what? They got this game over in Scotland called football. That's your football, football in Scotland. You know what that is? It's 90 minutes of guys running around pretending they're hurt. And we got you back in football now. Football, brah. No, we all play football. That's like three hours of men running around pretending that they're not hurt. That's, <laughs> that's football. Nice. So you agree there, Chuck? Of course. Well, Angus. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Anyway, I'm going to do this gadget, this wee silly... See, I'm starting to talk like him. Is this Angus's gadget or your gadget? This, no, this is Angus's gadget. All right. So this Angus, is you're having a job, man. Brah. How's it? Anyway, <laughs> bro, this is Angus Gadget. It's an umbrella. It's an umbrella, <laughs> hands-free umbrella. What? Well, in Scotland, they wear these things. That's for sure. Because <laughs> we're all a bunch of sissies in Scotland. A hands-free umbrella. Hands-free umbrella. Yeah, when they can hold their whiskey they in one hand. Oh, and, you know, they don't have any wind there. Yeah. Real men don't carry an umbrella. You know that. Because it's hands-free? Because it's hands-free. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you know, football season's coming up. So yeah. we're ready for the yeah. football season this year, right? And you know what, UH, you know where the first game is? Uh, it's in Sydney. It's, did you know that, Chuck? I didn't know that. Yeah, They're going to play it, Cal. It, it's in okay. Australia. And the second game is where? Michigan. Michigan. One week later. Are that's you, football. Are you going to both games? <laughs> that's football. And I'm going to be there. Because I know you're a big fan. Game. I'm going to report every game. <laughs> Raz McTackle, you're the man. So anyway, that's what we got going. And you know what? I may be back. And Angus, forget it. I got this job. Aloha. <laughs> Wow, who knew? All in one family, too. Is that crazy or what? Angus just jumped off the line when he heard that going on. He didn't even come back. I know, he's done. <laughs> wow, uh, amazing. Yeah, what did I miss? What did I miss? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So let's. So you got. Yeah, I'm gonna just it? talk. I'm just gonna talk briefly about okay. something. That came, this is from Talos. You know, I get you get Talos as part. You get their report, mm -hmm. the Cisco guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought this was interesting. Uh, a guy this week, um, a researcher Gal ben Benyamani, um, was able to uh, exploit uh, full disk encryption on Android devices. Um, and there's a real interesting. I don't want to go deeply into this. What does this. that mean? Um, so, uh, you know, you, you can encrypt the, the disk drive on Android devices, okay. right? Like you can do it on iOS as well. Right. But he found a flaw. They've done a couple updates, and he was actually used both the updates, one from June, January and one from May, and take those updates and, and actually exploit them to break this encryption. So he decrypts it. And exactly. Right. And, and, and it basically what it boils down to, with it, without going into all of that, because it's, it's deep and, you know, I, I don't really pretend to understand it. There's a nice article about it. But um, ultimately... Because you can do that, because you still can use two-factor authentication, but basically once you can get the key, which is this, uh, this key for this QSEE, they call it, it's a Qualcomm Secure Execution Environment. So there's a piece of software on the chip that's not in the OS, right? And this is where this, all this encryption goes on. Mm -hmm. However, um, there's a way to extract that out of a Qualcomm chip in an Android device. Okay, and once you get it, then you can just brute force that all in thing protected is a password. So what I wanted to leave you with is if you're using that type of a device An Android and device. you're relying on it, you know, the, the, the information on that hard drive is really critical to you. You want to use a very secure password, one of them big, ugly, long ones, right? You don't want to be having that just your mom's first name or something on that piece of encryption because um, basically that's what it boils down to. If someone wants to break it, right. they can very easily. Yeah, one of the things to talk about, you talk about passwords. Mm -hmm. you know, and the thing I'm, Pass phrases. Phrases, and all that right. Sure. So, you know, like people say, well, what, give me an, an idea. And, you know, I say, well, think of something like maybe the beginning of a book, right? It was the worst of times. It was the best well, of times. Yeah. Or something personal to you. Yeah, yeah, some place that, that you, you went. Know, yeah, exactly. Right? I went to. Yeah, 
you uh, know, the Bears game in, in 1968 on February 1st right, or right, whatever. Right. Your first football stuff football. that no one else yeah, would no, know. So, so, so yeah. that way you can remember it yeah. um, and then throw a special character or two in there. Exactly. Or, you know, yeah. or a period at the end of every word just or something use, like that. Just use Gordo. No one uses that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no one does it all. Nah, nah, not at all. So anyway, so we're talking here with Chuck Lurch, yep. and um, let's get into Cloud Sigma now. Sure. So we talked about DR Fortress, Colo. Yep. Um, a lot of major players, uh, local players now, yep. are, are using that facility because they don't have to worry about buying hardware, software, staff. Right. I mean, all those kinds of things. Um, we had Cloud Sequoia Group on mm -hmm. um, before. They talked about all the different flavors of cloud, and this is just another flavor. So That's what is correct. that flavor? So Cloud Sigma is, uh, they call it a KVM-based hypervisor, so that means you can run any x86 or 64-bit operating system. Mm -hmm. You can upload your own ISO, like disk image. But where did I load it on my, at your laptop, my office? And, yeah, or, you can or load it from your office up into our cloud and oh, so run. Oh, at DR Fortress. Yep. And They're on their own bank of servers? Yep, we have our uh, own bank of servers inside our cloud cage. You have a cloud cage. Okay. And what it is, is Cloud Sigma, again, is an international cloud provider that um, we went in partnership with and mm -hmm. popped the DR Fortress facility, meaning so it's just not here. It's just not in the Hawaii. It's in um, three places in the mainland U.S. and the Philippines, Australia. It's all over the world. So when you need support or anything, it's you just don't have Hawaii. You have so a support staff in Bulgaria. It's globally, high, yeah, it's global. So it's global. So when he said pop, he means point of presence. So yes. you can you can have it here located locally, which gets you good speed, good connectivity. Yep, exactly. But you have the op option probably mm -hmm. to do like disaster recovery in case something were to happen to a facility here, someplace else exactly. around the world where the disaster didn't occur. Okay, so that would be so like that's, a, that's a cool option to have. Yeah. An Amazon Web Services without selling Amazon product. That's correct. Yeah, right. So, but it's the you know your Chuck does get taxed, no? <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you pay it. Yes, we do. Um, oh, which reminds me. Which reminds me. Another point of uh, interest. Uh, first quarter or next quarter. This quarter's up. You got to pay your GET tax. Yep. I'll do that this weekend. Um, and I get to pay it. That's a good sign. Yeah. Um, that is a good thing. So anyway, so so but provisioning. So, yeah, so quick, quick, yeah. fast, so you, fast provisioning. You, right. Spin up a machine okay. in what a minute? Uh, Thirty seconds. You Thirty. Half a minute. You can yeah. have a machine online. Uploading an ISO, I guess, is based on That's your upload good. speed. Exactly. So walk me through this. So I'm 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 a, uh, the XYZ company. Mm -hmm. I've got my own servers. They're old. Yep. I need to be replaced. I could call up, say, Hey, I want to stand up similar, but yep. they'll be state of the art servers. Yep. I you know sign up a contract, whatever, and boom, I start standing up servers right and then away. migrating my applications and everything over to yep. that. Very very simple. So uh, another cool thing is you can bring that into the facility. You can bring your equipment in, and we can. Seed it, the USB or whatever your your data right. into our cloud is faster because you're going to be yeah. on premise and right. sure. go right. to your inter other internet connections. So, yeah, a lot of people that are, have aging servers or server closets that have experienced major failures will spin up inside Cloud Sigma. We've had multiple disasters. You know, with the power in Hawaii is not oh, yeah. always the what best. What about the phone that was a couple weeks ago? Yeah, Hawaiian Telecom was down on spotty all over the place. Right. But you've got. Three, three carriers in there now? Oh, no, we have more? a lot more carriers. So you got yeah. a lot more carriers in there. So if you stood up, if I was to stand up my system and pick primary ca carrier, secondary carrier, well, this tertiary is carrier. Too. So actually Cloud Sigma, what we have is um, three primary carriers. We use Level 3, CenturyLink, and Hurricane Electric. And we also have a connection to our internet exchange. So if any one oh, of those the carriers nice. starts to pick up for whatever reason, you still have the other carriers and it will, it will automatically fill over. So now how do you pay for this? It, you pay no, it's, by, it's free 99, I'm reading it. Yeah, right. Actually, seven day free trial. Now that's awesome. How's that for service? So you stand up a server, check yeah. them out, see how the performance is. Wow. Seven days for free. So, yeah, right. you know, get an image up. So that's amazing. Then stand up your image and if it's yeah. working yeah. fine, then you can say, okay, let me come up with a game plan to migrate it over. Yeah. Right. So you pay on day eight, by the way. It's not free forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and the other difference between like Cloud Sigma and other clouds is if you look down there, there's live support 24 7. So yeah. Like Amazon Web Services, the other ones don't really have a live support. Um, oh, is that right? Now, is there live support here on island or is it? Um, distributed. It's distributed. So that's in Bulgaria, but you can always call the Air Fortress and get support as well. Yeah. So so again, yeah. because of time zones, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about the fact that it's you know it's past six o'clock in the evening on the East sure. Coast or whatever. Exactly. I've got I got the service. Type and here. you know we've had a lot of people that you know fear of cloud was a lot of it was based on they right. don't they don't have a throat to choke they can't right. get a hold of their 
I need my stuff working, right? And right. so we, we, you know, there was that fear. And so this, yeah. this eliminates some of that, especially you can host it locally. It's not hosted in a Amazon or Azure, which is definitely not done here on, in Hawaii, yeah. right? So you can get a hold of somebody. You can go look at your virtual yeah, server if you're really one of, those, yeah, yeah. one of those server huggers, yeah. you know. Like. Or you could do a hybrid of that where you could yeah. have your virtual server and you could have your own physical backup server yep. located, yep. you know, in another location within your facility. Yes. So you can so go when say, all your stuff breaks, when, it goes yeah. live yeah. over if, there. If exactly. it <laughs> and if you wanted to, you want to wear belt suspenders, you could put a third one in your own facility yep. as your backup to your backups. I mean, yeah. literally. But each, each time you do it, the cost goes down on the backup side because mm -hmm. you're just going to be paying for the drink. Well, it depends um, on if it's live or, you know, there's, there's dynamic and well, dynamic failover. But then if you're the, kind of uh, I'm thinking the reverse, like if you're a utility, utilities want to capitalize everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where Cloud Signal oh. could be a challenge. But what you do is you put your primary, you buy all your own equipment, right, yep. you put it in DR Fortress, mm -hmm. and then you make the Cloud Signal your backup. You can do that. Yeah, you're virtualized. Yeah. So, again, Smart. we're looking yep. at all the different ways that you can kind of do this. Mm -hmm. And you, now, do I have to have a lot of high-tech people working for me to do this stuff? Uh, depends on how technical you are. Okay. I mean, you need some knowledge of like how to spin up a, a server, server or, you know, if you can install like Windows on a tablet, you should be able to handle yeah. classic. But I could be able to go and find, but there's local players around there, town. There's tons of resellers. And, yeah. Um, and the other, the other thing I think is some real important that we, that we should talk about is the, those other, the big, the AWS and the Azure, right, mm -hmm. the offerings that people get, you know, told about here. Yep. There's a lot of latency, and you mentioned it earlier yeah. about that distance in the ocean, and so some applications are sensitive to those types of Yep. millisecond latencies and things like that, right? Exactly. So, so we don't have a, that problem here. We've had a lot of um, companies that have, you know, local companies that like their mainland software providers like, oh, go use our cloud. And so they move their application to the mainland and right. then what happens is it does not working right or something else. And now those providers are calling us and saying, hey, can we spin up an instance right. in your cloud just so we can service our customers? So, yeah. so, so keeping, this, yeah. keeping this in mind so our, for our viewers to understand, there's yeah. a number of different combinations here. Yeah, So um, tons. You, know, you, you have a choice. But one of the keys, I think, is you don't have to build a data center. Yeah. You don't have to put the batteries in there. You, you don't, don't got to buy you a get, server. You don't have to do all that kind of stuff. And you pay by the drink. Yep. Right? You pay exactly. by how much you yeah, use. Yeah, it's scalable. You scalable. can grow it, shrink it as needed. And you're also using um, super heavy-duty drives. Yep, all you know, solid state. All solid state drives, yep. so a lot of cool stuff in there. It sounds like a commercial, but it's not. It's just, you know, it's just the way to go. And yeah. this, yeah. Is, this technology is available it's, it's here in Hawaii, so yeah. you should should definitely check it out if you're looking to uh, so some So, guess services what? Around. We burned another yes, 30 minutes. Yes, we have. You're going to get another cup. Oh, that's awesome. Do you remember, now the question is, do you remember what number you had the last time? Aha, uh -huh, gotcha. <laughs> anyway, so this is number 75, so okay. we'll autograph wow. it in just a second. Thank you. Number 75 in the series, so now you've got two. There'll be a lot of people fighting to get that one. Okay. Anyway, Chuck Lurch, DR Fortress, Cloud Sigma. Awesome. Andrew Lanny. Aloha. No, yeah. not, alo Thanks not, for watching. not aloha yet. Not aloha yet. Oh, you're going to do <laughs> your <laughs> thing. Our exit. exit. We got our exit. But I want to thank Zuri and Nick and Emily. Yep. Emily, our thank new you. intern. Thank you, Emily. You're doing a great job. Anyway, as we say at the end of every show, this is new. Okay. okay. All right. One, two, three. How you How doing? How you doing? doing?